So this video started as a rant. I recorded the whole thing, saw that I got a little too heated at times, so I scrapped that recording and re-recorded, well, I'm re-recording it now, the whole video. There won't be any visuals because, again, this did start as just a rant, but if you wanna watch the video, I'll just put like a nice little calming clip on loop. Also, excuse the background noise, but I think you guys are used to that by now with my videos. <laughs> so I cannot believe that I'm actually making this video, and I know that it's probably going to be considered an unpopular opinion, but it's borderline insane how the biggest talking point of season 14 of RuPaul's Drag Race so far is the sexuality of one of the contestants. Ever since I stopped doing weekly reviews of episodes because I just felt like that for me was very lazy content that usually just boil down to I like this or I don't like this, I have taken a different approach on doing topical videos when there's a season airing. Basically, something will happen in an episode, I will broaden the idea and make a video about it. So, what is it that piqued my interest after the first three episodes of Drag Race season 14? Well, there are two things. The first one has to do with June Jambalaya's critiques in episode 1 that represent how the show puts extra burden on queens that bring any non-US cultural aspect to the show, while simultaneously avoiding criticizing it either because of their lack of knowledge or because of their fear of getting cancelled. However, this topic can be expanded and I most probably will do it in the future. The second thing that piqued my interest was this whole discourse around metamorphosis sexuality. So if you somehow were able to miss a fact that's been repeated ad nauseum on and off the show, metamorphosis is the first cis straight man that's competed on Drag Race. I'm not on social media, so I thankfully did not have to read all the nonsense people were mad about when it comes to this, but I am a big fan of Lady Bunny and her podcast with One Exchange, where in one of the episodes, Bunny talked about just how big of a negative response Maddie, and the show of course, got because of Maddie's casting. Bunny said that most people that were upset over this were essentially saying that queer spaces were being taken away by this, that drag is exclusively a queer thing, and that it's not fair. Bunny also said that most of these people also probably had no idea about actual problems that queer people were facing in the United States, and might I add, in the rest of the world, and even worse, did not even care to get informed about the actual stuff that matters. However, in true Drag Race fan fashion, they were just there to yell about a TV show that is barely at all a reflection of the real world, of the queer community, or of drag in general. Obviously, I knew that there would be a scene or two where Maddie would discuss her sexuality. Every queen is cast for a certain characteristic that the producers can build a story around, and not because of their fantastic talent in something, it's a TV show. And so, obviously, Maddie being a straight cis man would be a talking point in an episode. I knew that this was going to happen, and I get it. It is a little weird to see someone who's different in a group full of people, and the obvious plan of action when you're part of the majority is to ask the person questions about their identity and also later make jokes about that identity not being set in stone, meaning that they also can become part of the norm. Oh, wait, 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 no, 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 that's the opposite of what you're supposed to do. Obviously, context is different, queer people never were the majority, nor do they create entire cultures that shame, punish, or kill straight people. So, yeah, it's interesting how, when put into position of majority, these queens, well, switch like fa- However, there have been queens that flaunted the fact that they came from, or were still proudly part of cultures, read religions, that at their core are queerphobic, and still to this day punish, shame, or kill queer people, but this was never a problem on or off the show, while Maddie being straight and being on the show is. I will repeat this later, but straight and queerphobic are not synonyms. 
The language the queens were using was also very questionable. Every single one of them called Maddie a straight drag queen. Why are they surprised by the concept of a straight drag queen or a drag queen that happens to be straight? For example, there are trans women that do drag. And if we go by the logic that around, I don't know, 1% to 10% of the world's population would identify as queer sexuality-wise, then most of those trans women that are also drag queens, are straight. Obviously, it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but I think you get my point. For fuck's sake, Maddie's not even the first man with a girlfriend that's been on the show. Scaredy Cat on Drag Race UK Season 1 was similarly and annoyingly questioned about her sexuality and identity by a bunch of mostly gay men. Because she just did not want to identify her sexuality and because she had a girlfriend. Wow, what a novel concept. If I'm not wrong, Desesterina, a queen that appeared on season 2 of Dragula, their only good and watchable season might I add, is also a straight man. Does the rest of the cast of Drag Race season 14, or at least the second group of queens that was with Maddie in the second person? Premiere, see doing drag as just a gay man or a gay woman thing. They may not actively say that, but if their words convey a different meaning, given the context, the whole situation becomes very questionable. Plus, once we look at this season that also has two trans women, it gets even worse. If we reach a little bit, it may seem like they are invalidating their identities as trans women that also are probably maybe, maybe not straight. You know what I mean? So while I watch any season of Drag Race, especially these newer ones, I always take notes when watching them so that I can maybe use something that I saw or heard in a future video. So I wrote down a quote from episode 2. I did not write down who said it though, but the quote goes as follows. I've done drag for a long time and I've never met a straight drag queen. <laughs> okay... And I've personally never met a person who's of Native American descent, so clearly those people do not exist, you know, because only my experience of the world is real and valid. And so, because I have not experienced something, it just is not real. Is that right, guys? Yes, that's how the world works. What makes this situation even more hypocritical is that Maddie said that she got into drag because she was exploring her identity. You know trying to figure herself out. Now, I'm the first person that will say that one's identity is fluid and that putting labels on anything with you is stupid and counteractive, because when you do label yourself, and I've seen this from many examples in real life, you value and think of yourself as and because of that label. Like, you're not you, an individual. You're all of these labels that carry characteristics with them. Thus, I believe that labels are dehumanizing in a way and do not help with the normalization of queerness. By the way, yes, queer is also a label, but you can't really talk about this topic without introducing a certain universal kind of a label, and this is the least specific one, meaning that it's the most broad one, so that's why I'm using that one. But I digress. Exploring your identity, I guess, is only okay if the end goal is being queer. But then, and at the same time, amongst the gay men, there's this hooking up with a straight guy and turning him gay fantasy. Like, tell me I'm wrong. I, I know I'm not, because it's happened way too many times that I've told a gay man about me being sexually assaulted by a straight man, and their response being something along the lines of, oh, that's so hot, or something like that. In episode 3, Maddie, when standing next to Bruno, a giant, muscular, almost naked, sexually exploited for a TV show. Yes, I know that he's willingly being sexually exploited. That does not make it okay, because then we put into question, like, would he ever be on a TV show if he wasn't being sexually exploited? Gets a little confused, flustered maybe even. Yeah, because you all just spent a day or two questioning Maddie's sexuality. She probably knew that she was going into Drag Race as their first cis straight male contestant, and so she obviously might have felt like a fish out of water. RuPaul, of course, makes a joke about Maddie changing her sexuality while being on the show, which just... <sighs> I'm not even gonna comment on it. Let's look at this from another layer. We've got to this point where we can say that drag is an art form. It's like a mixture of visual and performing arts, right? 
Yeah, so I guess certain forms of art are only available to certain people. Hmm, that's new. I never heard of this. I mean, that's what I'm getting from these comments on the show. Plus, RuPaul's whole thing of Maddie missing something when on the runway, and then him meowing like a cat, but also trying to apply a high femme fantasy, adds another weird layer onto this. Sure, yes, Maddie was a little awkward at times, on the runway. But we also know that RuPaul likes drag to be in the sphere of pretending to be a woman and building your own identity around this completely different persona. Now, we can talk about how genuinely poorly constructed and dangerous this idea of escapism and pretending to be a character in order to feel valid while not feeling valid when you are yourself. But that is a very touchy subject and I genuinely don't want to offend anyone or make anybody upset. However, I also want to say that, hey, not everybody has a femme side, nor wants to be femme, feminine, whatever. That does not make their identity, whether it be queer or not, invalid. It speaks volumes that the only trans people that RuPaul allows onto his show are the ones that are feminine. And also, before I finish this and then get hate comments probably, some of the response I heard about Maddie being on the show from drag queens that are not on the season has been horrible. Like, I really love IMA show, but Darby saying that people are probably upset over Maddie being on the show because they had problems with straight men, traumatic events even, is stupid. Like, I'm just gonna use that word. It's stupid. Go to therapy. This is such a US thing where every ex person immediately represents every that's similar to them. Like, Maddie now represents all straight men ever. Diabetes now represents every person that has type 1 diabetes. Uh, Orion's story represents everybody without a personality, and so on and so on. I just don't get how you guys don't get this. No one person is representative of all people with similar identities, similar backgrounds, sexualities, skin color, just whatever. What world are you living in? Like, please, if you have this kind of a mindset, please go outside. Try to be friends with people that are different from you. Stop living on the internet and looking at things at face value. Also, stop projecting your traumas onto people that had nothing to do with them. No, straight people were not horrible to queer people. Queer phobic people that happened to be straight were horrible to queer people. That's just situational. What's not clicking? Also, Violet's comment on the pit stop that was like, oh, I guess now we're allowing flats and straight men onto the show. <sighs> Same vein, just stop it. I mean, my opinion probably does not mean anything to these people, so, you know, at the end of the day, who cares? We've really come full circle. I actually just made a video of defending a straight person from a group of people that's mostly queer. Yes, I am a straight ally now. I cannot wait to see all of the comments about that. Uh, thanks for watching, I guess. Yeah, I don't know.